And welcome to the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting. We do appreciate your attendance and for the viewers, thank you so very much for tuning in. For introductions, on my left is Commissioner Larry Hudkins, and on my right is Vice Chair and Commissioner Todd Wilchin, and I am Commissioner Roma Amundsen, Chair of the Board. And assisting us this morning, we have Ryan Swaroff of the County Attorney's Office, and we have, uh, oh, for heaven's sakes. Carrie. Ann Taylor. Yeah, Ann Taylor, oh, my goodness, yeah. Ann Taylor and Dan Nolte of the uh, County Clerk's Office and Carrie Egan of the County Administrative Office. I'm sorry, Ann. <laughs> I had my met, I had my senior moment. So will you join me now in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> Come, uh, allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. <clears throat> okay, now thank you for joining in. Okay, and Mr. Clerk, will you begin the agenda, please? Up in the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the wall at the rear of the hearing room. Additionally, a copy of all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk staff. The material can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Agenda item one or minutes. Approval of the minutes of the joint meeting with the Lancaster County Agricultural Society held on Thursday, November 17th, 2016. I move approval. Second. Let's move to second that we approve the minutes of the joint meeting with the Lancaster County Agricultural Society. Um, any discussion? Any corrections? Please call the roll. Hudkins? Yes. Shore? Abstain. Wilton? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries three yes, one, uh, one abstain. Uh, approval of the minutes of the board commissioners meeting held on Tuesday, November 22nd, 2016. Move approval. Second. Let's move to a second that we approve the minutes of last week's Board of Commissioners meeting. Any dis any corrections? Please call the roll. Hudkins? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number two are claims. Approval of all claims processed through November 29th, 2016. Move approval of claims. Second. Let's move in second that we approve all claims processed through November 29th. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number three is a public hearing. County Tax Amendment number 16012 to the Lancaster County Zoning Resolution to add maxim maximum area standards to residential accessory building regulations. Mm -hmm. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Tom Chaka, planning staff. Uh, this application before you is for a text change to the county zoning ordinance to establish maximum area standards for accessory buildings. Uh, currently, the zoning code does not define the amount of accessory buildings you can have on your property. Uh, it's basically established uh, based on the definition of an accessory building, which says an accessory building is subordinate to the main building. This definition kind of leaves it open to interpretation of how large of an accessory building you can have based on the main building, which building and safety has kind of used a kind of a policy that hasn't really been established, but they've used it for several years. This is to actually put in writing how much you can have. Um, recently, the city zoning code was, was amended to add these standards to it. Um, the planning staff had worked with a advisory group before establishing those city standards. And a few of the, um, just to name a few people on the um, working group, there was a representative from the Home Builders Administration. There was also a representative from LEBA, and another one was um, the board president of the Home Builders Association. So we, they had a, a wide range of um, interest on, on the group. Um, what's before you, the standards 
are the are basically the same as what the city adopted. And just to remind you, the city ordinance goes three miles beyond the city limit, so it does take in agricultural areas also. Um, to give you an example, on the tables that are on the fourth and fifth page, this would be under the AGR table, and you would go to the, in this case, the third column, two acres to less than four acres. You can have 2,000 square feet of accessory buildings any, you know, within the two feet of the lot line where accessory buildings are allowed. Or you could go up to 8,000 square feet if, um, n if no more than 2,000 square feet are within the setbacks. So if you keep most of your accessory buildings out of the setbacks, you can have much larger amount of accessory buildings. And these standards would only apply to single family dwellings <coughs> and attached single family or duplex dwellings. It doesn't apply to commercial or industrial. Also, um, if you have either in AGR or AG zoning districts, if you have 10 acres or more, there's no limit to how much accessory uh, buildings you can have. So it's basically limiting in more of the R districts, which you don't have a lot of R district in the county. Uh, there is some R districts in the unincorporated villages. And then for AGR um, areas and smaller ag lots, uh, more of your cluster development type areas. Um, have any questions? Larry? Well, I uh, want to compliment the planning department for getting a broad-based committee to take a look at this and so that there is orderly development, but I am uh, glad that you clarified that uh, on a bona fide farm, even though the uh, farmstead may be split off for insurance and for um, uh, financial reasons, uh, they can have machine sheds to, uh, you know, store their machinery and stuff, which would be larger than the uh, uh, 8,000 square feet. So I'm glad you clarified that. Yes. You mentioned a couple um, that um, these new text amendments would affect the unincorporated villages, and there's a couple of our districts there. Correct. Um, would existing buildings be grandfathered in? Yes. Okay, any further comments? <clears throat> All right, thank you. Um, well, this was a, a public hearing, and so I guess I will close it. And uh, let's move on to um, the correlating item. Under new business, 4A, a resolution in a matter of county tax amendment number 16012 to the Lancaster County Zoning Resolution to add maximum area standards to residential accessory building regulations. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this resolution to the county text amendment. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Wilchin? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. V is a review of claim filed by the Lancaster County Community Corrections Department to parallels in amount of $175. The claim is beyond the 90 day period under Nebraska revised statute 23-135 bracket one. Good morning, <coughs> Kim Etherton, Director of Department of Community Corrections. Um, we invited a representative from Parallels to come today, but I don't see anyone from Parallels here. Um, so I'm gonna tell you what I know <laughs> and we'll move forward with that. Um, we did take a look at the, lab, the payments that have been made to Parallels um, through 2013 through 2016, there have been 51 payments made to them, um, and five of those payments have been beyond the 90 days. Mm -hmm. So there's a pattern. Um, I do know that they've had some change in staff at that organization, but again, I can't speak to the details of that. I'm not certain what those, what those changes are. So 
Um, other than that, I have um, Landon Parks with me, who's the coordinator of Drug Court, if you have any questions about that. Otherwise, I'm not Mr. Quite certain what, what more to tell you. <laughs> was the uh, work completed uh, to your satisfaction? It was, yes. And so it's been completed. We received the services. Are you, you are recommending payment? I recommend payment. I, I do know that we've had discussions with them um, recently about being more prompt in their payments. They do have a new person taking over that role, so we're hopeful that that helps. Based on the recommendation of the Director of Community Corrections, I move approval. Second. Let's move to a second that we, re that we approve this claim um, okay. to parallels. Is there any discussion? Well, it is a little discouraging that you asked them to be here to talk with us, and they aren't. Um, I, I know if this comes up again, she says it's about 10% of the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that I will be voting no should we see another example of where they're not only beyond 90 days, beyond 125 days right. in this submitting was, their budget. I would say this was probably, this. yeah, this was an exception. I don't know that I've seen one this late in the past, so... Is this something that we could communicate to um, to them that this will be the last time? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. That'd be good. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Please call the roll. Wilton? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. C is approval of Lancaster County Weed Control Superintendent class description effective November 29th, 2016. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve the Weed County Weed Control uh, Superintendent class description. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. D is a recommendation from the purchasing department and a sheriff's office to award a purchase order for six 2017 Ford Police Utility mid-sized vehicles and accessories to Anderson Ford. Lincoln Mercury Mazda using State of Nebraska contract 14611OC. The total amount is $177,234. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve uh, the purchase of these uh, six Ford Police Utility mid sized vehicles. Any discussion? Madam Chair? Yes. I'd like to have one of the representatives from the Sheriff's Office come and. Uh, <clears throat> And perhaps you can discuss E also. Right. At the same time. I'd just like to uh, have you tell us a little bit. Uh, for years and years, we had the Ford Crown Victorias, and they were a staple. I mean, they stood together, and, and we got a lot of mileage out of them. I understand they're long, no longer available, and so you've gone to this vehicle now. Yes, and um, good morning. My name is Todd Duncan. I'm with the Sheriff's Office. And yes, Commissioner Hudkins, we used the Crown Vic for Crown Victoria for many years. We are somewhat dictated by the manufacturer as to what vehicle they release as their police vehicle or law enforcement vehicle. So recently, in the last few years, Ford has transitioned from the Crown Victoria to what they call the Police Interceptor Series, and it comes in two models. One is an SUV, which is what we tend to tend to rely on because of the all-wheel drive feature, and we're out in the rural areas. And the other vehicle they offer is the Ford Interceptor sedan, which is similar to a Taurus. So th we have very limited options in what is considered a police-rated vehicle. They have special features made just for law enforcement, safety features, and this is the one we choose. Do you have any of these vehicles or very similar ones in the force right now? I think you have some, don't you? And, we, and how are they holding up? Uh, we do have several, and they've been outstanding. We've really... we've. Um, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> Captain Brookhauser, who manages our fleet, just put out an email soliciting feedback prior to this order to the deputies that operate the new Ford Interceptor SUVs, and we got nothing but really good feedback. So we're comfortable this is a, a very good vehicle for us and, and the purpose that we use it, and uh, we appreciate the board's support in replacing our vehicles so that we can keep them safe and functional. Well, thank you, and thanks for doing the research mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and any further questions? Need a motion? We've got a motion. I, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, please call the roll. Hutkins? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. E is a recommendation from the purchasing department and the sheriff's office to award a purchase order for one 2017 four-door sedan, Chevrolet Impala, and accessories to Sid Dillon Chevrolet Buick 
Using the state of Nebraska contract 14632OC, the total amount is $21,340. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this purchase of the uh, 2017 four door sedan. Would you want to discuss this vehicle somewhat or yes. how, um, how you're using it and so forth? Yes, so this is one of our unmarked cars in our fleet. This was, like the interceptors we just discussed, a planned replacement within our budget okay. for 16 and 17. Um, so this new vehicle will go to the sheriff and then his vehicle will be rotated down the line. And we try to do that just to um, keep vehicles in service. We try to extend the life as long as we can. So we have a Ford Impala at the far end of our fleet that's, I'm sorry, Chevy Impala, that's reached its life limit and that'll be retired and then all the cars will shift down. Okay, well, thank you for that explanation. And Larry? And if it's an indication of past practice, some other agency will want that car. Yet. <laughs> so we really appreciate the job of uh, the, uh, the care that you give your cars, the maintenance records, and then being willing to pass them down to other departments when, it's, when you're done with them. We get great support. I should throw this out from the county shop. They do a fantastic job with mm -hmm. preventative maintenance, keeping our cars serviced and uh, on the road as much as possible. So I appreciate um, the county engineer's office for doing that. Okay. Well, I'm sure that Pam uh, appreciates that. <laughs> okay. Well, please call the roll. Wilton? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. 4F is an interlocal agreement with the Village of Bennett for law enforcement services within the village limits. The Lancaster County Sheriff will assign one or more deputies to duty in the village limits and provide a cruiser or cruisers. The village will reimburse the county at the average overtime rate based on the deputy sheriff's pay, pay plan as detailed in the agreement between Lancaster County, Nebraska and the Lancaster County Deputy Sheriff's Association Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 29. Term of the agreement is September 1st, 2016 through August 31st, 2017. So this is an agreement that's been in place for many years. This is just a renewal of the annual contract. I would point out there's been one modification that was made at the recommendation of the county attorney's office, and that's regarding the pay scale that we base our rate on. And previously it had referred to a specific salary contract under the FOP contract at that time. And the problem was that every time that contract changed every three years, we had to go in and amend this agreement. So with the help of um, Deputy County Attorney Durbin, we have retooled the language to just refer to the current FOP contract pay scale that's in place. Okay. So it, just, <clears throat> it, it updates automatically as the pay scales update. That was a good change. Okay. Thank you. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve this interlocal agreement with the Village of Bennett. <clears throat> Any discussion? Please call the roll. Wilton? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. G is a letter to Black Hills Energy requesting release of monthly billing and usage data for county properties to facilitate an energy audit. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve um, this letter. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Welchin? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. H is an electronic permitting agent agreement between the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission and Lancaster County on behalf of the Lancaster County Treasurer's Office. The agreement allows the Treasurer's Office to issue hunting, fishing, park permits, and stamps for the commission. The Treasurer's Office will receive issuing fees as set forth in the agreement. Okay, well this was something new that you had brought up a week or two ago. I did. Do you want to just uh, review it for the purpose of the public? Yes, thank you. Uh, Andy Stebbing, County Treasurer, Candace Meredith, Chief Deputy. Uh, you're correct, Madam Chair. Um, at the direction of the board and Carrie Egan, the County Attorney's Office, we revisited uh, an agreement, <clears throat> which I think is before you, and we would respectfully ask you to approve this. Uh, basically, um, the county treasurer's office will become a vendor able to sell, if you approve this, hunting licenses, park permits, um, fishing permits, um, anything that they sell, we can then sell for them. We would receive a fee, oftentimes $2 per transaction. Uh, it's not only good for us, it's good for them, it's good for the public. Oftentimes we have people renewing their license plates on a pickup truck, putting stickers on their boats, and they could then also buy the park permit for Branch Oak Lake and a fishing license for their son. So uh, it's difficult to gauge how much revenue we would receive, 
um, there are approximate, they, they like to have about one vendor per 1,000 people. So a town of 10,000 people would have 10 vendors. Well, Lincoln is far short. That's why they're excited about this, and so are we. Um, they have about 13 vendors. Lincoln has 13 vendors. So this will add three locations, three offices. We're ready to go. They're ready to train us with your approval tomorrow. Mm -hmm. so we would, oh, they, we, <laughs> sorry. they really kind of <laughs> want you on board. <laughs> Get down to the wire. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate mm -hmm. your direction a couple weeks ago to go back and clean up some language and stuff. Um, so we're, we're excited if you approve it. Um, we would be online by December 1st. And we can handle this easily. Uh, as you know, the lines are gone. Uh, we have plenty of staff. Things are going smooth. And we're ready to move forward if you can. And I'll keep you updated, certainly, <laughs> on the revenue and how this is. I think it would old, unfold nicely more of revenue each year mm -hmm. as word leaks out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Deb. And you are the first county in Nebraska to do this, correct? You're right, uh, Commissioner Short. You're right. Um, there's 93 counties. Ten counties, approximately ten, have county clerks, clerks. doing it. We will be the first county treasurer ever mm -hmm. in Nebraska. Uh, so we're excited about that. I think others would follow suit. Uh, and uh, we talked once before, this, this, this idea is not my own or my staff. This one came from the public. This came <laughs> from Kelly Johnson, uh, a, a lady that I know here in Lincoln, and she suggested it. And so um, it worked out really well. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Larry? Well, it might not have been your idea, but you took it and ran with it, and you and Candace both. And I want to compliment you on that because – whenever we can make it more efficient for the taxpayer, and you answered the question that I had written down here, will I be able to get it out at the West O branch? So all three of your branches will be able to issue it. And we're there writing out checks, and, and it's just, like you said, while it's on your mind, you're getting your, your permits, uh, and uh, we in, in rural uh, Lancaster County are gonna appreciate this service too. So thank you for looking how you can be more efficient and uh, more user-friendly, uh, both of you. This is a good idea. Very few departments ever wanna take on more work. And here you're willing <laughs> to do it and, and doing it willingly. And so uh, this is what good government's all about. So thank you both for being willing to bring this forth. And with that, I'll, I'll move approval. Thank you. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this electronic uh, permit, permitting <coughs> agent agreement. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Hudkins? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Four I is a grant contract with Fresh Start in the amount of $10,000 for Fresh Start's transitional shelter program for homeless women. Term of the contract is July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017. Good morning, Sarah Good morning. Hoyle, Human Services Director. Uh, this contract is funding through the Joint Budget Committee. This allows for homeless women in Lincoln and the surrounding community to receive shelter in a community-based treatment. It's um, set up similar to a house, and so women can receive case management services there as well as housing services. They also provide a transitional period up for up to two years for women. As they exit out of the facility and maintain stability in the community. So they provide that follow up case management and support services to these women. Move approval. Second. Okay. Move and second that <clears throat> we approve the grant contract with Fresh Start. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Shore. Yes. Wiltron. Yes. Hudkins. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. J is an amendment to grant contract C-15-471 with the Indian Center Inc. for the Indian Center for Directions Youth Program. The amendment extends the term of the agreement through September 30th, 2016. And this funding is federal funding. It's Title II funding that's funneled through the Crime Commission, and then we receive the funding from the Crime Commission. Uh, this extension is for the Youth for Directions program. This is a program, an after-school program, uh, primarily for Native youth, but it's open to all youth who are interested in attending. The Indian Center has asked for an extension to spend down all of their funding, and we have also requested uh, more information and evaluation purposes on the program. So... That's the reason for the extension. 
I, I do have a question though. This was an extension, September 30th, 2016? Yes. That's already passed. Yes. Uh, so there's- We have another contract in place to another group. This is the end of that funding. Uh, the Indian Center chose to work directly through the Crime Commission and not um, go through the county for the second round. So we needed to extend to spend down all the money from the first round before they started with, with their new funding cycle with the Crime Commission. So. Yeah, based on the recommendation of the purchasing agent and Sarah, I would move approval. Second. It's moved and seconded that we approve this amendment to the grant contract with the Indian Center. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Hudkins? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. K is an amendment to kind of contract C-16-31 with Audio Marketing Solutions, Inc. Doing business as Americom Communications Corporation Using the Lincoln Public Schools contract number IPDG number 2013-3932 for electronic video surveillance equipment and installation. The amendment renews the contract from December 1st, 2016 through November 30th, 2017. The estimated cost of the county is not to exceed $5,000. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this amendment to the county contract. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Hudkins? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number five are consent items. Receive and place on file the Clerk of the District Court report for October 2016. I move approval of the consent items. Second. We have moved and second. We approve the consent items. Please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number six is public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to county business non-agenda may do so at this time. Todd? Madam Chair, I would move that we uh, uh, add an emergency item to the agenda. Um, the t I understand the timing of a clear and present danger, which prevents the board from amending the agenda within 24 hours. But um, I believe that we should add an item involving um, 148th um, Street. I will second that uh, emergency item. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we add this emergency item. Are there, is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Wilton? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Avery? Uh, Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Okay. Pam Dingman, Lancaster County Engineer. Um, this morning I would like to talk to you about Structure J143. Um, and I'd like to draw your attention to the map. Hmm. There we go. Uh, there's several uh, green triangles on the map on 148th Street. A green triangle signifies a bridge that is less than 20 feet. So by state definition, it is not considered a bridge. It is not included in the bridge inventory. Recently, my office received a request for an overload permit that was a substantial overload, and we needed to um, make some calculations for 148th Street to verify that our structures could hold this load. Um, upon looking at the structures on 148th Street, we discovered that these three structures, two of which were built in the late 1920s, one of which was built in 1938, all had substantial amounts of fill placed on them. In fact, their rails were cut off and they were buried with three to four feet of fill and then asphalt and then asphalt overlay. And they were extended in addition to that. So they had, these small bridges had box culverts just stuck on the ends of them in the 1968. We hired a consultant, JEO, to do a analysis of the maximum load that in particular, the 1938 I-beam structure would take. Yesterday afternoon, I became aware that the results of JEO's analysis were that the bridge actually um, theoretically should fail under the dead load of the soil placed on top of it alone. Uh, that being said, I immediately contacted the Department of Roads and in coordination with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Civil Engineering Department, 
we began to implement a plan uh, for these structures. So I am currently coordinating with Department of Roads and UNL. This morning we had a conference call to try to figure out what to do with this bridge. It's an interesting theory because theoretically I have to close this section of road. I have to close this road. There, the calculations say there's no reason for this to be standing except for it stood since <coughs> 1968. So that being said, I've made arrangements with the University of Nebraska and Department of Roads to have this bridge load tested. So what we'll do is we'll go out and put strain gauges on this bridge and run weighted trucks over the, over the bridge to see what the deflection in the bridge is in order to weight rate this road so that we can open it hopefully to some level of traffic. We know that there is deflection between the added box culverts and the 1938 bridge. Um, this is literally a buried problem that uh, we discovered last week. So I'm recommending that this section of road be closed immediately. I have talked to um, Waverly School District and my office is also in contact with Rural Fire. In addition to that, um, we have prepared a detour plan um, for this area. We have closed this section of road before to repair culverts uh, and detoured back to 84th Street. Um, these detours are being put in place as we speak and, and we have also issued a press release to notify the public. In addition, I would like to refer the public to the map that we have on our main website under street closures. If you look at the Lincoln Lancaster County website, which will bring up the Google map, which will show your detours. Um, this closing is substantial, and I'm aware, aware of the magnitude of it. Our, our 2009 traffic counts indicated that there were 4,329 cars mm, on this yeah. mile. It's yeah, a huge. Very popular yeah. road. It's, very, it's huge. I do have a few pictures of, uh, of this uh, intriguing structure. Um, the top picture here you can see looks like a box culvert. You can actually see the cracking in the structure at the transition mm -hmm. points. And in addition to that, then... Um, you can see where uh, this structure has been hit by a motor vehicle in the past and then you can also see on the bottom uh, the I-beams which our structural engineer uh, refers to as baby I-beams and Department of Roads uh, structural engineers this morning referred to them as um, I-beams that, that shouldn't be weight bearing. <laughs> so um, that is the reason I am <coughs> recommending closure at this time. We will load test this structure and I will report back to this board on the action that needs to be taken. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, two questions. When you opened, you mentioned three bridges, but it's just this one that you're closing, even though the other two are similar in design? So the other two, what has been done to them is similar. However, the other two structures are a late 1920 structure and their slab concrete structures. And so we believe that they can act more as a box culvert. Um, we believe that this is the bridge that will govern. In other words, it's the weakest point. So once we have the testing done on this structure, we will weight rate that entire corridor of 148th Street for whatever this structure tells us. Okay, and then um, in non-engineering terms, you, several times you use the word diffraction or diffraction or- De Deflection. Deflection. Um, with regards to the bridge. Can you s explain exactly what that means? Uh, I can maybe try to show with a piece of paper. Uh, okay, so if I have, theoretically, this paper is, uh, is a bridge, deflection would be the points at which the bridge moves. Um, and so okay. we, we do know that we have some deflection uh, at the point at which the box culvert is attached to the bridge. Okay, now I understand, thank Unfortunately, you. Unfortunately, the other thing we have going for us here is that we don't have any plans for how these bridges were constructed or if there's reinforcement in the slab uh, or how they were attached. To us, it just looks like box culverts were not, not technically dialed in, so you, we don't really have a structure that's behaving uniformly. There's a lot of complexities to this. Um, we're fortunate that there, um, there is a professor and a grad student doing research on these types of structures um, for Department of Roads, and they've been looking at a number of um, what I might call intriguing county, mm -hmm. uh, county structural problems. And so uh, it's, it's, we're really lucky um, that this professor and her grad student are going to come out and look at this bridge actually tomorrow afternoon 
and then we hope to begin load testing it Friday or Monday. Okay. It's a good field study for them. Todd? My question is, as far as the, I know you kind of alluded to the fact that you know, you'll come back with the plan, but what time frame are we looking at? I mean, if they're coming out, we, we close it today, they're coming out on Thursday or Friday, um, when will we have answers? And I mean, how long should the um, residents expect the road closure? I don't necessarily know the answer to that question prior to them doing the testing on the bridge. I'm hoping that we'll have some sort of answer uh, mid-December or January 1st. We're at a difficult time for the university as they're getting ready to wrap up their semester here in the next couple weeks. So um, we're hoping that we'll have some sort of answer sooner rather than later. However, um, that answer really isn't the answer. That answer will be a weight rated um, status for 148th Street, which is really vitally important to the economics of our county. That is a major, major corridor. It acts somewhat like it is our East Beltway now. It is our East Beltway now. So with that being said, what we're going to have to do is look at a emergency design to replace all three of these structures with something much more sound. Okay. So, John? so just to clarify, somebody had requested a weight rating because they were looking at transporting some heavy equipment uh, over an these overload, roads. An overload permit, yes. So uh, uh, heavy, and so they went out and um, the county engineer's office went out and consulted with the engineering firm to, I guess, study the bridges and determine that they were, not only could they not withstand the heavy load, they would can't even withstand a, the weight of their own structure. That's correct. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> any further questions? And I guess we need to have action on it. Based upon the recommendation of the county engineer, I move we temporarily close, or yes, temporarily close, J143. Second. We moved and seconded that we close J143 based on the uh, recommendation of the engineer. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Edkins? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Okay. Cool. Okay. Next are announcements. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold a staff meeting on Thursday, December 1st, 2016 at 8.30 a.m. in the Bill Luxford studio of the County City Building. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold a meeting on Friday, December 2nd, 2016 at 1 p.m at the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department <laughs> lower level to discuss corrections director finalist. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold their next regular meeting on Tuesday, December 6, 2016 at 9 a.m. in room 112 of the County City Building with the Board of Equalization immediately following. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold a, jump, a joint public hearing with the Lincoln City Council regarding updates to the 2040 comprehensive plan on Monday, December 12, 2016 at 1 p.m in room 112 of the County City Building. County commissioners can be reached at 402-441-7447 or commish at lancaster.ne.gov. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting is broadcast live. It is rebroadcast on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays on Five City TV Cable Channel 5. In addition, the meeting may be viewed on the internet at lancaster.ne.gov under Five City TV Video <coughs> On Demand or Five City TV on YouTube. Move we adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. Please call the roll. Wilchin? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Okay, Board of Commissioners meeting is adjourned and let's move on to the Board of Equalization. A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the wall of the rear of the hearing room. Additional copy of our material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk staff. The material can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Agenda I and our minutes approve the minutes of the Board of Equalization meeting held on Tuesday, November 22nd, 2016. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. We approve the minutes of last week's meeting. Any, any uh, corrections? Please call the roll. Hudkins? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. 
Motion carries four to zero. Number two, are additions and deductions at the task assessment rolls. Move approval of the additions and deductions. Second. So we move to second that we approve the additions and deductions to the tax assessment rolls. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Hutkins? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number three is a public hearing. Uh, this is for motor vehicle tax exemption applications. And in, these include Cedars Youth Services, Christ Lutheran Church, Lincoln Cats Youth Group, Nebraska Crop Improvement Association, Pius X High School, Resource, Resources for Human Development, and St. Paul United Methodist Church. Okay, we'll open the public hearing. And uh, seeing no one come forward for, for support, opposition, or neutral positions, I will close the public hearing. And uh, let's move to four. Next is action on motor vehicle, vehicle tax exemption applications. I move approval of the motor vehicle tax exemption applications. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve these. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number five is public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to County Board of Equalization business, not on agenda, may do so at this time. I move we adjourn. Second. Move the second that we adjourn. Please call the roll. Wilchin? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Okay, Board of Equalization is closed. Meeting is closed.